Hello everybody. Today I am talking about cerebrum. Cerebrum is the largest part of human brain. It is heavily convoluted that means folded to fit in the rigid cranial cavity. Cerebrum has got two cerebral hemispheres that are connected by white fibers called corpus callosum. Each hemisphere has an outer layer of grey matter called the cortex and mass of inner white matter. Large masses of grey matter are embedded in the white matter. There is cavity within the cerebrum which is called as lateral ventricle. In this slide you can see the two cerebral hemispheres that are separated by a fissure that is longitudinal. It is marked with a red color here. So it is called as longitudinal cerebral fissure. The cerebral hemisphere has got three poles and three surfaces. The anterior one is a frontal pole which appears rounded. The posterior occipital pole appears pointed and there is a temporal pole. The three surfaces are superolateral, inferior and medial. The superolateral surface is most convex and extensive. The medial surface is flat and inferior surface has got two parts, orbital surface and the tentorial surface. This picture shows the superolateral surface which is convex. This is a flat medial surface shown in the lower diagram. There is a red arrow pointing at a C-shaped structure which is a corpus callosum which connects the two cerebral hemispheres. The inferior surface is divided into anterior orbital surface and the tentorial surface. There are three borders. One is superior medial border it extends from the frontal pole in the front to the occipital pole behind and there is an inferolateral border extending from the temporal pole to the occipital pole there is an arrow pointing at the pre occipital notch which is a slight indentation along the inferolateral border the inferior surface and the borders we can see from this picture there is a border marked as superciliary border. It extends from the frontal pole up to the temporal pole. It is shown in the second picture that is the right hand side of the slide with the dotted lines. There is an inferolateral border that extends from the temporal pole to the occipital pole also shown with the dotted line. Along the medial side we have the medial orbital border, hippocampal border and the medial occipital border. So we have the superciliary border, inferolateral border, medial orbital border, hippocampal border and the medial occipital border. Lobes of the cerebral hemisphere. There are four lobes of the cerebral hemisphere, frontal lobe, parietal lobe, occipital lobe and temporal lobe. Let us see how they are divided. Before going into the division of the cerebrum into lobes, it is better we understand what is sulcus and gyrus. Because the brain is folded, there are areas which are elevated and there are certain depressions. The elevated areas are called as gyri and the depressed areas are called as sulcus. The depth of the sulcus can vary. Main cerebral sulcus. First one is the central sulcus which is shown with the red color here. As you can see it cuts the superior medial border. Along the medial surface there is a calcarine sulcus which is marked with an arrow here. There is a sulcus which is called as lateral sulcus shown with the red color here. It has got three ramus. The actual red colored shown here is a 
posterior ramus of the lateral sulcus and we can see the two arrows pointing at the sulci which are anterior horizontal ramus and an ascending ramus. So there are three rami that is shown here, two marked with the arrow, anterior horizontal, ascending ramus and the posterior ramus. There is a sulcus which extends on to the superolateral surface which is encircled here, it is parieto occipital sulcus. This is the enlarged view of the parieto occipital sulcus marked with the red color here. The lobes of the cerebral hemisphere. So we draw an imaginary line which is shown in the dotted lines extending from the parieto occipital sulcus to the pre occipital notch. It is marked with the arrow here. There is one more imaginary line that extends from the posterior ramus of the lateral sulcus to the first imaginary line. So we have two imaginary line and the posterior ramus of the lateral sulcus and the central sulcus. So all together we have four lobes. Anterior to the central sulcus is a frontal lobe. Below the lateral sulcus, that is posterior ramus of the lateral sulcus is a temporal lobe. Behind the central sulcus is a parietal lobe and behind the first imaginary line is a occipital lobe. Sulci on the superolateral surface. We have seen the central sulcus already. We have a sulcus anterior to the central sulcus which is called as pre-central sulcus. Similarly, a sulcus lies posterior to the central sulcus which is called as post-central sulcus. Pre means anterior, so pre-central. Behind the central means post-central sulcus. Anterior to the pre-central sulcus, we can see two horizontal or antero posterior sulcus, they are superior frontal and inferior frontal sulcus. They are named so because they are two in number, so one becomes superior and one will be inferior. Because they lie in the frontal lobe, we name them as superior frontal and the inferior frontal sulcus. And the lateral sulcus is also marked in this picture. So we have central sulcus, precentral sulcus, postcentral sulcus superior and inferior frontal sulcus and the lateral sulcus. Sulci on the superolateral surface. Coming to the frontal lobe, as you know there is a precentral sulcus. So the area between the central and the precentral sulcus will be called as a precentral gyrus. And the area between the superior and the inferior frontal gyrus will be middle frontal gyrus. Above the superior frontal sulcus will be superior frontal and below the inferior frontal sulcus is the inferior frontal gyrus. It is easy to remember the frontal lobe has got two sulci that is superior and inferior frontal sulcus. So it divides the frontal lobe into three areas superior, middle and inferior frontal gyrus. There is an area marked A or shown with the orange dot here. It is pars orbitalis. So it lies below the anterior horizontal ramus of the lateral sulcus. There is an area behind the ascending ramus marked with the red color. It is pars opercularis. And the triangular area marked with B is a part triangularis. So these are the gyri what we can see here. Coming to the medial surface, there is an orange colored arrow which shows the cingulate sulcus. The red colored arrow shows the parieto occipital sulcus on the medial surface and there is a calcarine sulcus on the medial surface. So major, major part of the parieto occipital and the calcarine sulcus lies on the medial surface. To the gyri on the medial surface, you already know about the cingulate sulcus. 
So the area below the cingulate sulcus and above the corpus callosum is called as the cingulate gyrus. The area above the cingulate gyrus is a paracentral lobule. Anterior to it is the superior sorry medial frontal gyrus. Then we have the calcarine sulcus and the parieto occipital sulcus. So we get a triangular area in between the two which is called as cuneus. Anterior to the cuneus is a precuneus there. We have a paro olfactory sulcus that is marked with the blue colored arrow. So the important gyri here are cingulate gyrus, paracentral lobule, medial frontal gyrus, cuneus, precuneus. Coming to the parietal lobe, we can see a postcentral sulcus that is marked with the red colored arrow here. So the gyri between it and the central sulcus will be called as postcentral gyrus. There is a anteroposterior sulcus here which is called as intraparietal sulcus. So the area above it will be superior parietal lobule and the area below it will be inferior parietal lobule. Then we have the two arrows, yellow, orange colored arrows pointing at the supramarginal gyrus and the angular gyrus. So these are the important gyri on the parietal lobule, postcentral gyrus, superior and inferior parietal lobule, supramarginal gyrus and the angular gyrus. On the temporal lobe again it is easy just like the frontal lobe here we have two antero posteriorly extending sulci. So because they are two in number we call it as superior and inferior. Because of its location, we call it as superior temporal and the inferior temporal sulcus. So it divides the temporal lobe into three parts. So we have named it as superior temporal gyrus, middle temporal gyrus and inferior temporal gyrus. On the occipital lobe, we have a sulcus that is pointed with the blue colored arrow. It is a lateral occipital sulcus. So it divides the occipital lobe into two areas. So it is called as superior and inferior occipital gyrus. Then we have a moon shaped sulcus which is called as lunate sulcus. On the orbital surface we have an red colored arrow which is actually pointing at the olfactory tract. It lies on a sulcus which is called as olfactory sulcus. So the area medial to it is called as gyrus rectus or gyri rectus. Just lateral to the olfactory sulcus there is a H shaped sulcus marked with the blue arrow. It is called as orbital sulcus. So it divides that part of the orbital surface into four parts. So we can name it as anterior, posterior, medial and lateral orbital gyri. There is one more sulcus that is marked with the red color. It is occipitotemporal sulcus. It divides the tentorial surface into medial and lateral occipitotemporal gyrus. So we have parahippocampal gyrus, medial and lateral occipitotemporal gyrus. Always we have to remember the cerebral hemisphere controls the opposite half of the body. Different parts of the cerebrum have got different functions and Broadman has divided into different areas concerned with different functions and that is why these areas or the functional areas are called as Broadman's area and totally they are 47 in number. First is a motor area. The primary motor area is the area number 4 and pre-motor area is area number 6. It includes the posterior parts of superior, middle and inferior frontal gyri. And free frontal area is concerned with our thinking, mainly abstract thinking 
judgment making emotions and concentration areas there area 4 so it occupies the precentral gyrus the area number 6 is a premotor area if you see this picture on the right hand side we have the picture of the brain and there is an area which is marked as motor area that is nothing but the precentral gyrus and on the other hand side other side we have the precentral gyrus and we have the parts of the body but if we observe it it is represented upside down and there are certain areas represented there if you see the lower limb is represented on the paracentral lobule area or the medial surface then we have the trunk the upper limb that is arm the hand the face and the tongue if you see there is disproportionate representation of the parts of the body if you see you can make out that the lower limb and the trunk and the trunk which are having bulk of muscles or are bulky with many muscles have got smaller area of representation on the cerebral cortex whereas the tongue the face and the hand they get more areas for representation so this is because involved in more of skilled movements so these are the things what we have to remember with the motor area so area number 4 is a primary motor area so the precentral gyrus and the paracentral lobule form the primary motor area they control the voluntary movements of the opposite half of the body body is represented in the upside down manner and there is disproportionate representation of the various parts of the body representation depends on the skill involved with the movements so the tongue and have got larger representation the sensory area is area number 3 1 and 2 as you're seeing it occupies gyrus and the paracentral lobule once again it represents the opposite half of the body in upside down manner again there is disproportionate representation the hand the face the tongue getting more areas of representation so it depends on the intricacies of the sensations that are received from these areas speech areas now speech areas we have two types of speech areas one is motor speech area also called as broca's area it involves area number 44 and 45 that is pars triangularis and pars opercularis this area is concerned with the coordinated movements of or organs concerned with the speech then we have the sensory speech area or the wernicke's area area number 39 and 40 so this area is concerned with the interpretation of the language whether it is spoken or written language so both these areas are present in the dominant hemisphere that means for a right handed person the left cerebral hemisphere is dominant and for a left handed person the right cerebral hemisphere is dominant so if we are a right handed person then the broca's area and the wernicke's area will be on the dominant hemisphere that is the left cerebral hemisphere visual and auditory areas primary visual area is area number 17 and secondary visual areas are areas number 18 and 19 so they are located on the occipital lobe the walls and the floor of the calcarine sulcus contain area number 17 that is primary visual area which are concerned with the vision the primary auditory areas are area number 41 and 42 which are located on the superior surface of the superior temporal gyrus or the area specific area is anterior transverse temporal gyrus area 22 is a secondary auditory area so this slide shows us the various areas primary sensory area shown in pink 
purple area is a motor area that is precentral gyrus we have the broca's area shown in dark orange light orange represents the wernicke speech area light green shows the primary auditory area light dark green is the secondary auditory area the gray color shows the primary visual area and secondary visual area is shown in the light pink sorry light blue color so these are the important areas which you are supposed to know superior lateral surface of the cerebrum is mainly supplied by the middle cerebral area artery which is shown with the light pink colored here so majority of the part of the superior lateral surface is supplied by the middle cerebral artery as you can see the occipital pole is being supplied by the posterior cerebral artery on the medial surface most of it is supplied by the anterior cerebral artery and the inferior surface is mainly supplied by the posterior cerebral artery details you would have studied with the circle of willis so lot of exercise to the cerebrum but actually it is easy so you have to go according to the lobes then the naming the sulci and the gyri becomes easy you are supposed to know the parts of the cerebrum that is pole surfaces and the borders then the important sulci and the gyri and the important functional areas of the brain thank you